Derby weekend in the Gallagher Premiership brings the two houses of top flight rugby union in the north together in Salford. It's sale against Newcastle in round six. A Premiership trophy apiece, Newcastle's from 1998, sales from 2006, but the achievements of both these clubs through the years is perhaps best measured by the players that have worn blue and black and who have shaped the landscape of rugby in the north. England's most famous try in England's most famous game, almost 20 years ago to the day now, would never have been scored without players from both clubs. It was Wilkinson to Robinson, Newcastle to Sale, and history written. This season, though, it's Sale who look like serious contenders with four wins from five and a chance to go top tonight. Things aren't so rosy in the northeast. With Newcastle winless so far, they come to Sale with a raft of changes to the 23. Well, both teams arrived about an hour and a half ago in Salford, and we managed to catch up with both Alex Codling and Alex Sanderson to hear their thoughts ahead of this one. Alex Seller, four from five so far this season, and you could go top of the Gallagher Premiership as well tonight. What's that good start been based on? The best performances have been around the cohesion of the squad and a squad that's maturing together, been able to come through periods of, uh, of strife, like the first 10 minutes against Bristol last weekend or weathering out the last 10 minutes against uh, Northampton in that first game. So. We've just seen like moments of, of, of resilience, I'd say, and uh, along, alongside that, allied to that, um, some, some really top performances um, by our back three, Rob Dupree, George Ford coming back in, and Ernst, Ernst Van Rijn, the superhero uh, on the blind side flank there, who's topping the dominant tackle count for Europe, from what I've heard. Even for someone like Ernst van Rijn, there's, there's small things perhaps to work on. What are the work-ons for the squad as a whole that, that you're always looking to improve on here? I think set-piece for us um, has been not up to our standards of where we want to be by way of dominance. You know, more dominance, scrum outcomes. So I think you'll see improvements for that over the next three to four weeks as we've got all our senior hookers uh, coming back into rotation and selection. Um, Thereafter, in some of the games, it's just been execution, really, and that you know, again, that comes with probably playing a little bit more and giving yourself a little bit more time. So I'd like to see a bit more execution for tries we've left out there and a little bit more dominance up front. A word on tonight's opponents, uh, Alex. Um, were you surprised when you looked at the team sheet, the starters, and the 23 they've picked? Um, surprised. Yeah, I thought I'd see some of their arches in, and we we're looking forward to to caging up. Uh, Pardon the pun, caging up a Radwan or a Carreras, you know, in the in the backfield. So, uh, but you know, we just judge ourselves by our standards tonight, not by the team they brought up. And I'm sure they'll put out a good performance. Alex, set no wins yet for Newcastle, but where's the squad at in terms of the performance levels that you expect? Um, look, I think you look at it in two parts. First four games, uh, lots of positive moments, could have and should have. Obviously, Saturday or last Sunday against Saracens was disappointing. Um, there's no hiding away from that and we played the, with the champions last week and we played the runners-up for the Premiership this week, so another big test. But that's why you play the game. A quick turnaround as well. Um, talk us through your selection changes, 13 new faces to the starting 15 alone from last week. What's been the elements you've had to balance this week to make that decision? Uh, three main elements. First is injuries, so we picked up a few bangs and knocks last week. Uh, secondly, as you mentioned, is a short turnaround. And thirdly, is just around the Argentinian players. They've had a tough World Cup. We obviously lost Mateo shortly after he came back, so I have to be mindful around making sure they're fresh and ready for the rest of the season, having had a, uh, a tough World Cup campaign, although positive for them. Obviously, a lot of youngsters involved tonight, and Newcastle have such a good track record in bringing through youngsters. Um, who particularly should Falcons fans be looking out for tonight to keep, uh, keep track of? Well, it's fantastic. It's four, deb four uh, debutants for the Premiership tonight, and one, uh, the fullback, as we've already seen earlier in the season, Bed Redshaw, is only 18 years of age, so he's certainly won. Ollie Spencer off the bench, but there's loads of young talent, and uh, it'll be a great experience for them playing here at uh, the AJ Bell. Alex, thanks for your time. Hope they go well tonight. Thank you very much. The thoughts of both coaches and now the thoughts of the two-time Premiership winner. Once with Sale, once with Northampton. It is Christian Day, of course. Uh, Christian, to take Newcastle first, no wins so far, as mentioned and, and as Alex Codling spoke about. There's debutants in the 23 tonight as well. They're taking on a near fully loaded Sale, but they won't be lacking in motivation, will they? Especially those youngsters making their debuts, their first starts for their hometown club. Take us inside their mind right now, inside their changing room. 
I think the way Alex said it to me sums it up. It's exciting. You, you can't have your tail between your legs and say, we're going to sell shots and we're resting a few players. We've got a short turnaround. You've got to be excited about it. And, and they've got several players who are exciting. And it's brilliant to hear a DOR talking about an 18 year old fullback, talking about Guy Pepper in the back, in the back row, who I think is going to be a superstar. I think that the challenge is there in front of them. They've said they've had a horrible run. They've had the top of the table, the champions, and now the runners up last year away from home. It's a horrible run of games, but the challenge is there, and we'll see if they're up for it. Sale, Alex has spoken about resilience, he's spoken about cohesion, but technically, what have you picked up of that they've been so good at this season? They've had one blip, haven't they, away at Exeter, where they got an absolute hiding from an Exeter team that at home looked red hot. I think as the runners up last year, I always think you, you go into the next season with a bit of a chip on your shoulder, and I think Sale Sharks need that. They need to be the gritty, Northwest club that no one wants to play on a Friday night, and I think Alex breeds that. He, he loves it. Interesting, some of his little comments. He's clearly not happy about set piece. He wants to see that improve tonight, and there's a challenge there tonight because I think Newcastle up front look quite tasty. Um, I mean, looking at the heads to heads, I've said his name already. Guy Pepper. If you've not seen him play, he is an athlete, and he said about Ersvan Rin in the back row. He's another athlete. Looks like a superhero. The, the two that I'm going to talk about, Pepper and Ben Curry. Captain Fantastic, great player. He's a clone of his brother and brilliant. In the back line, I'm going to highlight two fullbacks. Uh, we've got Redshaw, 18 years old, superstar in the making, England under 18 captain, played a year up last year, and now he's playing Premiership Rugby, third game already. And at fullback for sale, Joe Carpenter. I feel like he's an old man, he's 22, and he's a superb rugby player. I think he's massively underrated, good under the high ball, good footballer, and he makes a lot of line breaks. Overall, just three changes for sale to that starting 15, 13 for Newcastle as they try and put that loss to Saracens last weekend at home. 50 points scored by the visitors that day behind them. They're using a host of different players, some that we're seeing for the first time in the Premiership ever, some that are getting their first runs out today. And they will be up against it in the Shark Tank. Everyone here hoping to make this a top-of-the-table victory tonight. And if they get a bonus point, then it doesn't matter what happens down in the West Country derby with Bath. They will be top of the table tonight and stand a good chance of staying there until the end of Sunday. Yeah, and, and as well, it, don't underestimate this. I think this makes it 10 from 10 at home in a row for sale if they win this. Last time we, they did that, I was playing at Edgeley Park. It's, uh, it's a massive run. And, and like I said, I think if Sale Sharks want to be that top-of-the-table team, which they were for a lot of last year as well, this has to be a fortress. Teams have got to think, I don't want to go on a Friday night and play Sale Sharks away, and, and they're delivering fair play. I think for Newcastle, like I said, a, a tough run of games and, and, and unlucky in some of them. They, they could have beaten Bath, they could have beaten Saints. They got a hiding from Saracens, and I can tell listening to Alex Codlin, he's not happy. He is not happy about that performance, and he won't want to back that up tonight. I think the scoreline tonight is probably less important for Newcastle than the performance. He wants to see some grit, he wants to see some determination from this young team. He's spoken about the challenges a lot this season. He's spoken a lot about excitement and he wants to bring that to Newcastle. And I suppose the selection today, it's, it's an optimistic one. It's based on excitement because if these players play well and then they can continue that and merge with that first team who are some arrested, the Argentinians we, we've heard are being rested, some are injured, nursing bumps and bruises, then they'll be in a better place uh, later on in the season. There's always that challenge for the DOR, and it's easy to sit at home and play champ manager and say, oh, I pick this team every week and we'll win every week. You've got to manage players, you've got to manage injuries, you've got to manage World Cup stars returning. You can't just burn people out all year. Um, so look, that's the conundrum. He's juggling tonight and he's giving some experience to some really young players. And like, like you say, that might just later in the season be something Falcons really need. Well, no rest for the captain, Callum Chick. He is leading his team again from number eight. And out they come. Louis Brown at the back there, making his Premiership debut after joining from Coventry over the summer. Callum Chick signs up for another shift. And as do many of these sales sharks, Gus Creevy there, he was straight back into action after the World Cup. No rest for him, and he goes again tonight, whilst George Ford, who we have heard, is being rested. The Dupreer brothers, both present, that are fit. Here comes Rob Dupreer, moving to 10 tonight. Creevy, with all that experience, 
in his kit back of over 100 caps for Los Pumas. And Ben Curry captaining tonight. Referee Adam Leal. And he's assisted by Simon Harding and Peter Allen, the TMO tonight, which surely we will rely on at certain points. David Rose. Small delay here, Christian. I think the ball hasn't come on with the players. Yeah, no ball, no game. It's a simple rule, isn't it? Time your run, please, time on. So Rob Dupree finally gets his hands on the ball and goes short. Newcastle live to that one. The Northern Derby begins in Salford. Falcons in their Gosforth green and Sale in their all blue. Please. Callum Chick with the first carry for the Falcons off that centre field ruck. Okay, use it, please. And James Elliott will look to secure this ball on his debut for the club. He was in the academy as a teenager, moved away from the club. Now he's back after joining from Jersey after they sadly went to the wall earlier this season. Now in a Premiership side, though, the number nine. Ben Redshaw, the 18-year-old from fullback, his third start of the Gallagher Premiership, and he this kicks this downfield up against the returning Joe Carpenter in that particular head-to-head. -head. Redshaw goes down the tram lines, and he's done brilliantly there. Marvellous kick from Redshaw. You know, if I was going to highlight something before the game, what Sail Sharks invariably do is they have an incredible defence and they win kick battles. And for Newcastle to start this game, retain possession, enter a kick battle and win it with a 50-22 from your 18-year-old fullback. I mean, what a start for that kid to say to Sales Sharks, you're not going to have it all your own way. And if there's one thing Newcastle have done well this year, it's more. So what a start for Falcons, what an opportunity. Yeah, more, more metres made in the Gallagher Premiership than anybody else this season. It's been one of the bright spots for Alex Codling. No surprise when you think of where he's shoved his head for most of his playing career. Elliot lets the forwards keep it. Now wants the ball. Taken by Hutchison. Elliot has Brian Byrne to rely on here. All that experience in his 30 years of Brian Byrne. And McCallum takes it on after that. So Sharks defence looking organised. Little pop round the back, nice movement from Kerr. And Kerr gets it on to Brown. It's a debut try for Louis Brown. And there's only two and a half minutes on the clock. Welcome to the Premiership. Well, it's going to be a sail walkover, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, what a start for Newcastle Falcons. What a brilliant, technically excellent start. They got the chance at the mall, and I tell you what, they didn't quite get it going, but they very nearly did. Looks good for the future. And, and, and here, beautiful back play. Beautiful. It's Sail will challenge you physically all day long. At some point, you've got to do something different. And that play out the back, executed brilliantly. Like, what a start for Newcastle Falcons. Two minutes on the clock, and they go 5 0 up. Another fast start from the Falcons. They've been making a habit of this. Josh Thomas. Welsh fly half, wearing 10 tonight. And off his left boots from a very tricky angle. And the fly half pulls it across the post. But this was wonderful. I gotta say, I... I talk about sales defense they put a wall up first three defenders you've got to try and get outside it and that was a perfect example of doing it they beat that sale blitz got the ball to the width and got the reward in the corner brilliant start and what a moment for this man 25 years of age he joined from coventry over the summer he's also played for leeds and old eltamians in national one on his way up to this point now on the score sheet in the premiership Okay, Take by John please. Hawkins. They've been statistically the best starting team in the league as well, Falcons this season. 
But that has really only taken them to the first 10 minutes. After that, Saracens last week started to take control. Okay. Quinn's the week before that. Be but three very competitive you, fixtures no. to open up. And they really should have taken time, more you. out of the loss down at Bath as well. Bright beginning. Just give a yard next Elliot time. goes long and makes a good touch finder as well. So we're perfect, Christian, so far from the visitors. Yeah, it's a really nice start. And the last thing you want when you've got rotation, you've got young kids coming in, you don't want an early silly mistake that everyone thinks panic. And they've done the exact opposite. They've been picture perfect. The challenge laid down for Sale Sharks now. Get your power game in. No one packs that in a bigger punch than Gus Creevy, and he finds his man. Gus Wall gets the Sharks moving for the first time tonight. Now back to the left they go with Creevy and Dupria under pressure. Loop pass over to Dan Dupria. Shoulders the load for carries in this forward pack for Sale Sharks. War slips, regathers. Dupria goes over the top. Testing how alert the Falcons are, but turning nicely. Not on the ball. Hutchison was waiting for that, and he's supported by his centre partner, Zach Kerr. Chick. It's good to see Callum Chick stepped up already, making the kind of the nasty little carries that you've got to make as a captain and as a leader. He, he needs to do that for his team tonight against this physical defence. John Hawkins with that last carry. Right. James Elliott at scrum half, one of those Jersey players who's starting with a different team now. Their lives having been upended over the first couple of months of this season. Joe Carpenter back amongst the starters again. It's a hamstring tear in round one which kept him out, but he's fit and firing on the score sheet last weekend. Now in the 15 jersey. Thank you. Not now, no more. No, it's still under the foot. Well left. Use it, please, Gus. War. Well, he'll certainly test out this back three of Newcastle with his pinpoint box kicking. Take from Elliott was a good one. Thomas plays scrum half and Hawkins again. Okay, use it, please. The patience battle is one which is so hard to win with Sale. They're so aware of how to tire out a team with the aerial stuff. Carpenter decides to go with the ball in hand option and Curry is with him. Water Dupria. Rob Dupria now. And Creevy. Tackle, come off. Plenty of Falcons Argentinians contingent have been rested tonight, but not Creevy. And this goes up again. Backwards by Sale, then backwards Back by Back from Newcastle. Aaron Reid. So play on. Here's Pepper. Just 20 years old, but one of the more experienced players in terms of appearances this season, anyway. Release. Right, you need you to be made the good point about the patience here. It, it, it feels like it's low octane, but this is what Sale Sharks do, I think, probably as well as any other team, probably bar Saracens. They, they kick contest so well, they pressurise you, they wait for your mistake, and then they kill you. Carpenter, one of those who can do that, but Aaron Reid as well, chips ahead. Redshaw has a lot of time here. Composes himself well. And, and that's exactly it. And Alex Anderson mentioned in his, in his pre-match how dangerous this back three for sale can be. This offload there, he doesn't get the credit he deserves at fullback Carpenter. I really do think, you know, England A apparently coming back this year, he's got to be knocking on that door, but there are... There are so many talented young fullbacks in this country, but he's one who I think is, you know, he has, he has to be close. He has to be. Creevy finds his man. Wall stretches Rob Dupree, but he takes it down nonetheless. Back to the left they go. Hill from Rain with the pop pass. Now, Dupree. Moving this player. Things looking a little more promising now for Sale as they go through the phases. But at that point, of course, the nifty hands of Callum Chick 
pinch the ball back. Yeah, great turnover. He got in quick there. Waiting for the exposed man. Two hands clearly on the ball. And uh, Newcastle now again. They've got to be calm and careful and exit. Don't get too too far beyond yourself. Say I want you to play. They want you to panic. Just, just okay. Use it well. please. Get your defensive line up there. Kieran McDonald knocked backwards. Okay, use it, please. And yet again, being very cautious, the scrum half. He's right to be. Tom Roebuck, first touch of the game for the right winger. Inside. Elliot finds touch on that one. You know, with all these uh, caterpillar exits, which everyone hates, but but the coaches love because it gives that safety on exit. Newcastle needs to be really careful. I think it was Adam Leal who gave, I think, two turnovers in the Gloucester game for being too slow. Crowd are just starting to have a little whistle and, and you know it's going to play on that ref's mind. Let Gudo, do go to Van Rijn, off the top. Dupria into the midfield. Sale starting to warm the glow plugs tonight. War. Creevy. Dupria, Roebuck into the line, chips it ahead. Aaron Reed is herring after this. Reed is there and touching down. Aaron Reed steals in again. Sale on the board. Number four for Aaron Reed of the season. He's electric, Aaron Reed. I, I love watching him play. He always does a little bit better than he probably should do. Sale have worked this wrap two or three times now. This time they got it to the edge and a beautiful kick through. I think it was by, I don't know who it was by, but, but Reed, great contest. He gets a bit of luck in the uh, in, in the spill of the ball, but he finishes it off as any good winger does. And then this back three for Sale are impressive. And they're young, they're all young. I think I think Reed's the old man at 24, um, but, yeah. but they're dangerous. You give them half a chance, they'll put points on the board. And I was just checking to make sure there was no knock on by sale, but it's all good. Thank you, appreciate it. Put, was it Bedlow put the kick through, I think? I mean, both these centres for sale are good footballers. Both of them can put the ball on the foot. It was Roebuck on the, off, coming from the, the opposite wing. It's, uh, you see it a lot now, don't you? That little slider through for the winger to chase. Rob Dupria sets this off and doesn't find the poles. So five apiece between Sale and Newcastle in Salford, and this one, a well-worked beauty. Callum, we did check, no knock on. So Thomas, off that left boot, finds Ernst van der Rijn, who has been tearing up trees all season. Okay, Alex Arneson said this week he didn't think he'd be as good as this. He's outside, lads. Signed from the Stormers over the summer. It's looking like an excellent piece of recruitment again from Sale. Ewan Stevens, first touch of the ball for him tonight. One of the two players retained in the starting 15 after the loss to Saracens. Carry from Cardle. Thomas has Carpenter scuttling back. Sale players in front, work out, please. Since I've been picking him up all game, he's got to do something terrible, hasn't he? <laughs> it's, it's a, a poor kick from a good footballer, that. But this is what Newcastle need. They need that territorial win. They've just spent five, ten minutes defending, pretty much. This gives them another chance. And last time they were down here, they executed well. They look good. Stay, back. Stay in the 15, please. Knocking on the door of that red zone, the 22. Lainan is good enough, although it delays Thomas and Co. a little bit in the midfield. Pepper involved. And Sale pinch it. And Visa goes forward. Yeah, you're tapping him in with your foot. War. Capria again. James back in the centre tonight after deputising at fullback. 
Stevens has got in there and hasn't quite stayed in. He's a player who you like the look of, Christian Daly, the left winger for Newcastle. Yeah, he got a good run, didn't he? I think it was when I think Radwine had some issues with his hip or his hamstring, and he got a good run of games and, and looked dangerous. He looks like another, another Radwine, another Carreras, another, another box of tricks. So it's, it's you know, it, it's, it's never nice to say we've not got our first 15 in, but at the same time, I think you and Stevens can do a easily do a good job in a first 15. So it's. It's his opportunity tonight, like I said, it's, it should be exciting for him and, and I hope he can uh, he can take the chance. Creevy's line out, surely not straight, and Adam Leal spots that. I think he got away with his first one, Creevy, as well, so, yeah, that one, that one was way off the line, wasn't it? I actually thought Newcastle were a little bit unlucky on their, their line out just below us here. I thought the ball was slapped out by the sale player, which could even be a knock-on or a penalty, and like you say, it delayed that midfield transition. Guy Pepper got a... A tackle sandwich and, and lost the ball in contact. So it's little, little bits can go yeah, against you sometimes. It's how the team can react. Sure you know, the referee's not going to get everything please. right every so time. You've got, you've got to be able to overcome it when, when things don't quite go your way. But I think Gus Creed can, can can definitely straighten up his okay. stories from now on. 38 now, Gus Creevy. Played in all seven of Argentina's matches at the World Cup and Surprisingly, perhaps for a man of his CV, he's not won a major trophy in Europe despite playing for the likes of Beerit, Montpellier, London Irish. Now at sale, and who knows, that particular absence may be solved in his time at the club. Sale get it back with War. Over to Roebuck, who has to let it bounce and then straighten. Tackle from Zach Kerr. Bevan Rod ducks the attempted tackle from McDonald's. War goes over the top. Redshaw is covering across but doesn't have to play that. It's another smart kick from the classic repertoire of Gus War. I think, uh, I don't say this lightly, I don't think there's a better tactical kicker in the Premiership than Gus War. And he came from nowhere last year to effectively be first choice of the, uh, the finalist team. He's, he really has, he does such a role for this sale team that fits how this sale team wants to play. I don't think anyone puts the ball in the dot better than he does. Commentator's curse coming up, no doubt. Burn to the back, instead sale steal. Curry hits the deck, gets up, gets a face full of Newcastle. Dupria. Rod. Does well. Newcastle stand off the loose head. War. Johnny Hill back in the team. Over the gain line. Back inside from Van Rain or tried to find Bedlow. War just uh, loses control of the ball but hasn't knocked it on. Johnny Hill. And Sale. Three metres away, Harper looks for the line, James Harper. Held up. Held up. It's good defence from Newcastle. And to be fair, this, this goal line dropout splits opinion. I actually think that's great defence. You know, big man carries there, two metres from the line. They've dragged him over the line and held him up. They deserve that defensive win there. Where, where I like it less is where the kick goes through and it's grounded. I think that's less, less that's excellent. Behind, but, um, Newcastle are fronting it well, aren't they? The physical challenge of Sale is obvious. When when Dupree's carrying, when you know when Curry's carrying, that the physicality is immense. And Newcastle have just got to sustain this effort. Yes, Chicky. Another peal of thunder goes into contact in Dan Dupree. Hill, Dupree, step back from Carpenter. He winds up the sidestep, and there goes Harper again. In his first ever Premiership start, the 23-year-old. Crossing here, I think Harper, like you say, stays on his feet well, and Creevy just overruns, doesn't he, and just restricts the ability of that Newcastle defender to come in and finish it off. Um, unlucky, might have got away with that, but it, well spotted by Adam Leal, and, uh, and Newcastle get that chance to, to ease the pressure. I really do feel like Newcastle are feeling pressure right now. They need to ease it, sustain a bit of time on the ball, they don't need to uh, score, but time on the ball and put a little bit of pressure back on sale in the territory. Five. It's 
Brian Byrne in the two jersey tonight. Jamie Blamaya is out because of his hamstring. It's Byrne, the arrival from Bristol in the starting role again. Doesn't find his man, Creevy. Puts in the sidestep on Josh Thomas, who does get his man. Contact in the air for the lineup. Played the arm in the air, not so the ball. Penalty here for obstruction in the lineup, or playing the man in the air in the lineup. So as you see, as, as uh, Donald goes up, you see him just drag the arm. I actually think that's quite harsh, but he does do it, and you've got to be squeaky clean. If you want, if you want referees to avoid lifting their arm, yeah, blowing the whistle, don't give them a chance. I actually thought in that line out it was a bit, a bit of a bizarre call because the, the front ball was on. Newcastle then used movement to go to the front and, and it led to being uh, contested. The, Just take it if it's there. The defense clean, um, that's but again, the arm in the a little air. bit of ill discipline. It's what Newcastle needed. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Stay down this end of Thank Sale Sharks. That's where Sale on. Aren't, aren't quite that physical line, dominant please. team. So they've got to defend their own line 10 minutes ahead. McDonald's in the middle, Hawkins at the back. Here's McDonald who moves to the front to take this. Byrne has to try and grab that as it pops out of the top. Sale have it back, but penalty to the Falcons. Yes. Ill discipline there, and this is the kind of thing Alex Anderson won't like when he talked about cleaning things up. You know, they expose Brian Byrne here, release and go back onto the ball. But instead, he, you know, he went to ground, which is a tackle, you've got to release, kept dragging on the ball, correct. ball pops out, referee has to make a decision again. So, um, they've done the hard work to, to get sure Burn out, just needed that little bit of composure. McDonald down and the drive on the front, mixing things up for Falcons and they're one metre away. Burn at the base. Brantingham is there as well with McDonald. McDonald pops it off to Hawkins, who did well just to gather it in. Advantage comes. Pop to the side and the Falcons over the line. Placing it as well. Newcastle get a second. And underneath the bodies, it's the captain, Callum Chick. Really well worked at the line out. Newcastle did something a little bit unusual. They, they won the ball towards the front, but actually shift drive at the front. And Bev Rod did a superb job of getting it on the ground. It really was nice play from Newcastle. Bev Rod saved the try, but then Newcastle got into this power game. And you don't expect Newcastle to overpower Sale Sharks here. Callum Chick has made a great start to this game. I said it earlier, gritty carries, gritty tackles, made a great turnover. That's what you need from your captain. Uh, Timmy Cardall there does a great job. Stays him, keeps him up on his feet, drives him the extra metre. Newcastle Falcons back in front. It's, uh, it's a great start. Josh Thomas. From a slightly better angle. But just pulls it a little to the right. So Newcastle stay at 10. But 10-5 against Sale after 22 minutes. And say, like I said, Alex Anderson won't be happy at that run of penalties there, whether they were all correct or not. You can't go pen, pen, pen. Teams will punish you. Uh, sail back to what they're good at. Territory, pressure on. Pepper tidies up. Thomas stays on his feet well. Excellent balance from the fly half. Please. Johnny Hill with the full knee slide there as he got, as he got stepped in a phone box. <laughs> Use the ball, please. Under the foot. He was at Ellis Genge's wedding last weekend, uh, Johnny Hill. That's why he wasn't present for the Sharks, given the weekend off. Straight back into action tonight. Curry lights the ball. War. Bedlow. Dupria. Second receiver. Drops it back to War. And Bedlow again. 
bumps the first defender, doesn't find a clean offload. And Falcons shut out Sale on their own 22. On the ball. Yeah, ball's trapped at the moment. Now you've got it. Use it, please. Yeah, inside, yeah. Yes. And Sale fans making a their feelings felt towards uh, James Elliott after 24 minutes of taking things very cautiously at the base of that ruck. I said, I think he needs to keep listening to uh, to Mr. Leo there. He needs to make sure he's managing that five seconds. He has five seconds when the ball's available. But I wouldn't test him. I wouldn't give Sale Sharp scrum, you know, scrum field position in, in the way they play the game. So these three players left the line out before it was formed. Okay, another technical error. So, uh, what, what the referee's saying is you can't you can't leave the line out and rejoin. So you look at Johnny Hill there, uh, uh, Harper. They've all left the line out and then re-entered to drive. And what they've got to do is slide down the line out. It's another technical one, but well explained by uh, by Mr. Lear. Was the bombs coming off the feet of George Ford last week? But this time. The Falcons try their hand at the tactic and Sale handle it well. Well, if you're going to dish it out, you may as well be prepared for it. And Sale were there. I feel like I'm explaining lots of penalties. Okay, if you fall on the wrong side of a tackle, draw a metre circle around it. If you're on the wrong side, you're getting penalised. And that's, that's very simple to understand. You've obstructed the ball coming back. And uh, Sale get 30, 40 metres of field position as a result. Bit too, bit too far out to drive, so I would imagine you're going to see Curry bursting out into midfield here or some kind of set play with the backs. It's a uh, dangerous place because you've got backfield as well as 22 metres out. Visa rises. Rod, little dummy on the inside. More slips and that's... Not the neatest pass for Kobus Fisa, but he does well. Now back to the left-hand side they go. James. Cardell is doing his best to slow things up, but illegally so. On the wrong side was Hawkins. to Priya. Thomas gets his boot in there. Penalty, though, in front of the sticks. It's the same... Ben, so we've got two different penalties. We've got the not rolling way here, or side in the middle here. Or offside just in the middle on the 22. 22. 22. You want this one? So same penalty again at the tackle. If you, if you, if you make a tackle these days okay, and yeah. fall on the wrong side, don't don't move offside. away instantly. You're going to get penalised. That was the first one. The, one the second one. Second one was a little bit of uh, gameplay by Newcastle. They came off the line early and were almost like, well, let's, let's kill it. Let's get let's finish away, this. Um, interesting. Sailor gone back for the first one to give the nice angle for the corner. The ball is coming. Sharks forwards gather round. Creedy and Rod confirm the call. They're on the edge, they're fine. Gus in the middle, thank you. Johnny Hill. And the Peel Mall goes down the blind side. Managed well by the Falcons, but can they stop Dan Dupria spinning and reaching? He's not near the ball. No, no hands, please. Harper, the next man in. Rod, though, gets the pick and fires himself towards the line. Sale go again. Falcons laying green bodies on the line in a desperate attempt to stop the next wave, which inevitably comes. And Ben Curry gets it for Sale. felt inevitable, didn't it? You could feel the waves coming, the waves of carriers, and Newcastle just couldn't deal with it. I think the mall was well defended initially, but it was this it was the first carry from Dupree. He got them three, four meters on the front line, on the front foot, and by the time you're one meter out, you're dead these days because teams have gotten so good at this. Carry, latch, keep him up on his feet really well, and they win that meter, they win the five points. Thank you.
a good game though, isn't it? It's not quite the uh, it's not quite the the, the one-sided that it could have been. I think Newcastle have really fronted up so far. It, it's uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a long night. To Priya on target and sail in front for the first time as we knock on half an hour. You're right, Christian. Two points in it at the half hour mark. If you'd offered that to Alex Codling before the match, well, he probably wouldn't have taken it because he's, he's very much his own man. He has high aspirations for this team, but it's not at all bad going. Okay, use it, please. Oh, I said, didn't I? He wants a performance. Outside, and so far, he has had a performance. It's been good. They need to, but they need to sustain it now. No point playing for half an hour. Carry Dupree secures in. the ball, and okay. Rob Dupree hammers this down the middle. Inside the half. 50, Josh Thomas on. goes after the ball. Carpenter. He's on side here. Threaded this nicely in the five meter, outside. which means. Brown, the out, debutant tonight Stand in the Premiership right, with that right. opening okay. score. Kicks it off his left boot. Redshaw's turn. Inside. Aaron Reid in the hunt for that. Side, Redshaw goes out. after this. Okay, all on. Closes in on Carpenter, gives him a bump, but Carpenter stays on his feet. Thomas cleans up. He's done well, Josh Thomas. But Sale were there in enough numbers. Muscling the penalty. I think I'll praise what Sale do so well. They love to counter up. They love to win that kick battle and put you under pressure. And they do that really well. Number two pushed the I, ball back I didn't the see the handling the on the floor, but that's what the penalty was for. But, you know, pushing the ball back while you grounded. But I think I'd rather focus on what was an excellent counter up from Sale Sharks and a great kick chase from uh, Joe Carpenter. Yeah, if you want to resource the ruck, I think he's in as well. Sam James to touch. Thank you. Thank you, perfect. Thank you. Manu Tuas Langi still out with a hand injury. Lads, don't By the way, three to four weeks massive, expected okay? until so Manu is back in the Cell Sharks team. Creevy to Dupria to Johnny Hill, who use his big frame, taken down well by Louis Brown. Brave stuff from the right winger. War to Priya. Rob Dupria goes himself to fly half. The two brothers in combination, and Sail in again. Well done in the end by Rob Dupria. I like how Sale, the real uh, urgency to keep the ball alive, isn't there? You wouldn't think it of Sale, but they, they make a lot of offloads, mainly driven by the Dupre brothers, but, but they keep it alive really well. The, the line out here goes a little bit wrong, I think. I don't. So I don't think that was supposed to happen, the offload from the line out, but it got Johnny Hill running. And at this point, this is where Sale, have, like I say, they've kept the ball alive really nice. Rob Dupre, who I think has been a superb last 12 months while, while obviously uh, George Ford's been injured. Good, thank you. And he takes the gap beautifully for the try. We did check it, but can you pick your battles? Because it feels like we're checking almost everything. I know it's like we're picking battles. Really like Two from three now for Rob Dupre. It's been his average for the season so far from the tee 66%. He has been kicking so far, but George Ford has been strangely off colour from the tee, at least, in his last two games, down in 30%. So it means Sale off the tee have been the least successful side in kicking on goal. And uh, something that might, not at this point in the season, be of concern, but later on as things head towards playoff territory, they might need to increase those percentages somewhat. Hill tidying up and starting to become more and more prominently locked forward. So to this man, Dan Dupri. Take him back into the half, use it please. Just for the first time in the match, there's a sense of authority 
about the way Sale are going about things now. Got the tries now to prove it as well. Ben Redshaw. Little juggle from uh, the 18 year old. Was captaining England under 18s in the spring. Then uh, stepped up from junior to senior academy for Newcastle. Trained with England out in Latuque ahead of the England Argentina game to help. Steve Borthwick's men sharpen up and what a wonderful job he must have done in that environment. And then he's come back and picked up numerous starts in the Premiership. Quite a year for the Falcons fullback. And here's his counterpart, Carpenter. No clear Penalty on halfway again. Penalty's just uh, accruing a little too quickly for Alex Codling's man, Guy Pepper this time. So it's Penalty's given for no clear release, so he said that he was part of the tackle before he before he hit the ground. If you're part of the tackle, you've got to release, you can't just stay on. It was uh, very marginal, but like you say, the last 10 minutes just feel like Sale are winning the kick battles, winning the territorial battle, the referees starting to take their side in a few uh, penalties, and all of a sudden, it's this, this, this wave of blue just, just pounding against Newcastle's defensive line. They're getting some treatment here. They need to get a little foothold, don't they? Okay, they need a little bit, please, little bit of kind of neutrality at the moment. It just feels like Sailor just on top, like you say. Christian, if you were back on the field in your playing days in, in Falcons' colours this time, please, what kind please, okay. of messages would you be barking at your teammates with these last five minutes to go before half-time? I, I don't think you can concede here. Th this would be my... You know, first and foremost, 19-10, you go in at half time, you're like, well, one, well you know, we're a couple you. of scores away. If, if sales score here, time on, please. Water then you really do know it's going to be a long evening second half. So that's first and foremost. I think if anything, it's just it's just the basics against sales. You can't that's give them a foothold territorially in the game. And you've got to work so hard on that kick chase and, uh, and protecting the catcher. Please. And that's the other thing that probably Falcons might be able to do a little bit better. For now in defensive mode and Hill goes up for it. Creevy, not clean ball at all. Dupria with the drop goal. Ala George Fords, no dice. No, it's knock on in the tackle. Scrum, tail ball. Small part of me thinks he's kicked advantage away there because it's just a knock on. I mean, he's got a, he's got a nice shot of goal. But, um, all right, we come back for the scrum, and I was a little bit surprised yeah, at the last just, scrum, actually. Sale well, got some real dominance, and that was something yeah, yeah, that Alex Anderson spoke about. I reckon this Sale front row are pretty revved up with two very young props. All right, Bevan Rod is an England prop, but he's, he's, you know, he's, he's young. Um, but Sale looked impressive on the last scrum. This is another way they can impose that physicality on the game. I think a couple that you've got spot on and a couple that you haven't, but I'll keep an eye on it and try and be consistent. Do you know when they were like those breakout plays? Breaking that... Breaking their back row set off. Because he's in the back lane. Has he got to wait till the ball's out? Yeah, it's when my arms are down. But if both of you break, all bets are off. All good? Thank you, mate. There you go, lads. Time on, please. Yeah, good, good stability. First scrum, keep it like that. Thank you. So Falcons looking to hold on. As this half edges towards its conclusion, but they've really taken the fight to the Sharks tonight, right from the off. And Louis Brown's try within two and a half minutes, followed by Callum Chick, second. Bind! Set! Creek comes on for the Sharks. Dupria goes to the line, drops it back to Aaron Reed, who is at speed and scoring. Reed with a first half double, and Sale now stamping their authority on the match. Nice set play from Sale. Newcastle, they held their own at the scrum, the ball was played. Look at the delay on that from Rob Dupria, beautiful. You know, th three attackers all into two defenders, and they made them pick, and they picked wrong. And I said, Aaron Reed, he's a little electric eel, isn't he? He always, he always wiggles through tackles. He always breaks tackles. He has incredible pace, and he finishes off his second try of the night. He's a good, good young player, young at 24.
Unless Thomas Dudoy has scored tries in the first half against Bristol, and uh, he may well have done, then Aaron Reid is at the top of the Premiership try scoring charts at the moment with five. I'll take mine, it's your time, lads. Easiest of a lot for Rob Dupriat, and he makes sure of that one. See it again, look how, look how long he delays that pass. And is there any criticism, could Newcastle have got up quicker? Made him, you know, forced him to make that pass with less control, but he, but he picked the perfect option, he picked that runner, put him between two tacklers, and, and the arch finisher did the rest. Any more tries for Aaron Reid tonight, and Alex Sanderson will owe his winger a pair of trainers, he was saying this week. Okay. He's got a bet on with Reed and Roebuck. Tom Roebuck, the first player to get a hat trick this season. He'll get a pair of shiny new sneakers. Backwards. Visa. Good take from Rod, and he straightens. Balls available. Sam James to Sam Bedlow, to Boyhood Sharks fans in the centres for sale. Knee on the ground. Wall injects some speed again, but he only has James Harper, but hasn't Harper done well? <laughs> Gus Wall might have been expecting Tom Roebuck to be it on the right wing there, but James Harper, goodness me, made a good go of that. I wouldn't fancy him bearing down on me as a fullback. <laughs> Fair play, he got around the corner, didn't he? And, he? and he does what this sale team do so well. They chase kicks hard. They send one person, they say, it's your job, go and get it. And it, Fair play to the tattered prop, he did that there. Burn to Hawkins. Newcastle tie up the ball. That was bad. That was what I was speaking about earlier. Falcons walk that option to the front. Just, just take it. Take it if they give it to you. Stay on, Bevan. Stay bound. And Josh Thomas boots the ball into touch. So the Falcons starting at a lick and testing Sale across all areas of the game, actually. But Sale coming good towards the end of that first half to pick up a fourth try courtesy of Aaron Reed's last score. He got two overall. And the Sale Sharks with a 26 points to 10 lead at halftime. Welcome back to the Salford City Stadium. 26 points to 10 between Sale Sharks and the Newcastle Falcons at halftime. It means Sale are on course to go top of the Gallagher Premiership tonight. I guess they have the bonus point in the bag. If they take all five points, then it doesn't matter what Bath do down in Bristol, down at the wreck tonight, excuse me. They will still be seeing sale above them in the league table tonight. And then, of course, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow between Quinns and Saracens. And Quinns uh, may well be able to top them if they get a bonus point and beat Saracens as well. But that's all to come later this season, Derby weekend in the Gallagher Premiership. And at the moment, things are, in terms of bragging rights, staying in Manchester. Well, Christian Day, for a Newcastle perspective, what do you think they need to be doing in the second half? And what will they be telling each other in the change rooms right now that they need to be doing? Well, we spoke before the game, didn't we? That this is an opportunity for, for some lads to get a run out who don't normally get one, and a really exciting opportunity to, for some players to make the debut. Uh, and there's a number of those that are going to come on in the second half off the bench, and they have to bring that energy, they have to bring that positivity with them. I think Newcastle started the game really well. They were, they were clean, they controlled territory really well, they, they, they obviously went up on the scoreboard twice, so the opportunity's there. What we saw towards the end of the half, I think, is just Sail Sharks imposed a brilliant kick chase on the game where I think they won three or four on the bounce where they were just winning huge amounts of territory. And as well, discipline-wise, Newcastle started conceding penalties. And as soon as you do that against a team as physical as Sale, it's a lot on them. So Newcastle need to start the game the way, start the second half the way they started the game, but not give Sale that leg up. Don't, don't let Sale impose themselves on you. You've got to be as clean as you can 
control territory wherever you can, and they've shown they can put points on the board. Sale haven't uh, lost in Salford in over a year now. October 2022 against Harlequins was their last Premiership loss. And Christian, from your time at the club, what makes Sales home? I know it was different uh, in your day at the time. So what makes Sales home? How do they make it a difficult place to come? I think it's interesting looking at the squad, is it? How many players do call this home? You know, they are Northwest boys. They have come from the area and it's brilliant to see Sale Sharks make a big deal of that. I think it was different when I was playing with Sale Sharks. We had some proper global superstars who, you know, Philip Santandre collected. This is a different feel to it. And I think Alex Sanders has done it really well, is that he's made the boys really proud to play for Sale Sharks. And, and, as, and as I said, they, they've made this a bit of a fortress. And, and that's what you need. If you're going to be a, uh, if you're going to be a top two team, you can't lose many games at home. And, and that's exactly what Sale Sharks are doing. Well, your era sales sharks, they made a lot of people fall in love with the game of rugby, the way they played, and also from years earlier as well, I'm thinking of the Joss Baxendall era as well, Steve Hanley, Daffodil Corner, Haywood Road, the way they played rugby in those days broke the mould for the Premiership, actually, and, and it's continued, and now everyone plays this quite attractive, impressive brand of rugby, but Sale have been doing it for, for over 20 years. Yeah, I mean, it's credit, you go all the way back to Jim Ballander and, and Steve Diamond, and that was their first opportunity in coaching, and... That team did have some superstars, let's be honest. They had you know, Jason Robinson early doors was was like nothing I've ever seen. And then in the um, you know in the in the Sant Andre area to bring Chabal, Jason White, Andrew Sheridan, they were global names, but you're right, that, that those the kind of the Haywood Road days was attractive rugby and it was exciting rugby. And the current crop carrying that forward with the likes of Aaron Reed, Tom Roebuck, Joe Carpenter there, back three. Style perhaps these days one more of pragmatism, but they really can play. Underpinned by this bullish, bruising pack. So the Falcons with so many positives to their name from that first half, but down on the scoreboard, 26 points to 10. Let me run, please. And Josh Thomas will kick us off. Sam James. Ewan Stevens. Okay, use it, please. Takes him to ground. Outside. Gus Walt. Steadies himself and makes this contestable. Reed goes after it. Backwards by Sale. Gets it back on Sale's side, but Newcastle thought they had it, held on to it. Penalty. And it's that same formula that we said they needed to arrest at, you know, post half time. Gus War puts the ball on the money. Aaron Reed chases it really well, makes a mess of it, and it leads to a Sale Sharks penalty, and they win 50, 60 metres of field position. It's. Um, it's, it's something that, that requires a lot of hard work, a lot of organisation, but sales charts are very, very good at it. Thank you, just on you. So Creevy to the middle. Johnny Hill almost had his pocket pick, but brought it back in. Fun rain goes right through the middle of that mall. Dan Dupree pumps those legs again, and Guy Pepper holds him up, but still the yardage is excellent from the sale number eight. Bedlow. James into contact. Fun Rain gets his hands on a couple of carries early on in this second half. Does so much of the hard work as well as eating up carrying meters. The number six for sale. Chipped over the top. Aaron Reed takes it in his stride, and Reed goes on the outside. Dragged into touch brilliantly. Another pinpoint kick yeah, from Rob Dupree. It wasn't that they kick you know, another, it's kicked to contest, but it's an attacking kick this time. It's beautifully put on the money. Uh, Great tackle in the end by the Falcons wing run, but it's more of the same, isn't it? More territorial pressure. Falcons are exiting right. here from Coffin Corner, and they need to just get a bit of stability back into this game as quick as they can.
burn to the front with John Hawkins and Pepper takes the ball off. Tidy from the Falcons. Thanks, lads. That's enough. Use it, please. James Elliott had a good first half on his debut for the club. Puts this long. Not quite contestable, but enough for Tom Roebuck to feel under pressure. Hard running from Louis Brown that chased him down. Yeah. Yeah, it's more of an enforced error than anything, isn't it? It's quite a long kick, and really, Tom Robert would normally eat those up in his sleep. Okay, so wait until the I think the, the proximity to the touchline probably bothered him a little bit. Really. He just took that eye off the ball. It's, um, it's the little foothold that Newcastle Falcons needed. Let's see if they can get down the other end. Off the top from McDonald's. Brown into the line. Almost the first carry since that try scoring run in the first half for the right winger. Burn again. Elliot doesn't get caught, but he's given a pass, which means Josh Thomas does. And Sale get the ball back. Hunting the Falcons down in defence. What's really impressive to see here, and I'll see if we can see it on the replay. It's James Harper here leading the line speed. Tight head prop. There he is. Bang. Putting a shot and on the opposition fly off. That, in the last one, the first half, it's impressive. Yeah. He's, um, he's put himself first. about tonight so far. He's been good in the scrum. He's, he's had a kick chase, and now he's getting off the line and putting pressure on the 10. It's, um, it's impressive from the young lad, and he's, uh, he's certainly got a frame on him to be a tight head. In for Nick Shonnet tonight, who is uh, out of action. See if he can follow it up with the meat and drink. It's a, it's a beautiful attacking position for a bat line. This midfield scrum, there's a backfield as well. It's, uh, it's what the backs dream of. Set. Rob Dupree, a position directly behind the scrum. And this platform has been so solid all night for sale. Okay, that station he uses. Dupree picks War, decides to go with Dupree, and Carpenter just fumbles the ball. Well, well, his execution pieces is something that Alex Sanderson has asked this sale team to raise a few percentage points, and I suppose it's moments like that that he's talking about. Yeah, they've gone wide well at times tonight, Sale, haven't they? They've, they've used that rat ball, they've used you know what, what they call a blocker play several times there with the ball going behind a runner to, to, to a ball player out the back. Um, it almost felt a little bit too easy then, a little bit too comfortable to make yards, and as a result, the handling just wasn't quite as crisp as they wanted it to be. Um, okay. I think that's the challenge for Sale now. Sorry, they're they're clearly on, on top in this game. You know how well can they execute? And Alex Sanders has spoke about that pre-game. They're going to judge themselves against themselves tonight. It's not necessarily what the scoreboard is. He wants to see a, a slick performance. You got good. You got good enough space here. Yeah. <laughs> Crouch. Bind. Set. How the Falcons on their own ball. Okay, play it away, thank you. Good enough for Callum Chick to get the ball away. You stepped off, you stepped off, thank you. McDonald's. Not on the ball. Okay, use it please. No, just you're on the back foot, you're fine, you're fine where you're starting. Elliot with the box, but for the first time he's under pressure from those extra long limbs of Johnny Hill. Home debut then for Luke Cowan Dickey. Comes on for Gus Creevy. And Cowan Dickey out for so long with neck and shoulder injuries. Turned out for the side last week and now in front of the home gallery.
There's some players in a, in a, in a different shirt that don't, don't quite look right, do they? And Luke Cowan Dickey is going to take some time to, uh, to get used to him in that Sail Shark shirt. The um, Newcastle line out was a bit untidy, but they catch a break with the Sail knock on there. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it's, it's going to take some getting used to that, isn't it? But what a player he is. You know, you forget he's. Uh, Okay, so, sorry, I just got a note from the AR. The ball was lost by Green in the lineup first, so it's Green ball. Green ball. The TMO, David Rose, just saying it was lost forward by Green, so you, Thank you, it should be Gus War who has his hands on the ball. Sorry, That's been I just corrected. Got a it was clearly lost forward by Green in the lineup first. It's like yourself, Christian uh, Gus War, a man of study, his uh, dissertation for his degree, which we got at the University of Manchester. It's on the tactics of the Labour Party at the 1922 general election. That was Gus War's topic of uh, choice. Quite a heavy topic, I imagine that. Yeah, I'll have a read of that tonight. <laughs> Set. Hit into knee, number one. The Falcons with a scrum penalty. Uh, and hit, that is and knee, one feather, Sorry, one sizable feather for the cap. So the penalty's on this side, it gets against Ross here, Harrison, you can see it quite clearly there. He, as he hits, he drops down to his knee, and we, we saw that penalty, didn't we, in the uh, World Cup semi-final. It's um, one, of those, one of those tick boxes that the referee will look for. Loose head on his knee, it's going to be penalised. Cheers, that's you. Many Sail Sh Sharks fans may have last seen Luke Kalandicki in a Springbok jersey just after the World Cup semi-final. He lost a bet with Rob Dupria and uh, had to wear that in training. Now in a Sail jersey. Off the top go the Falcons. Clattering into the midfield goes Hutchison, makes good yards the inside centre. Has had to live off scraps so far as well there. Now Burn has to stop to take it. He does likewise into the 22. Now this is Oliver Spencer stepping through the first line on his Premiership debut as well. An excellent introduction from the teenager, just 19 years old. Kieran McDonald carries the fight forward. It's been a slower start to the second away. half for Newcastle, but it's been a good one. Working their way to this position and now with the penalty. Again, it's, it's periods of ill-discipline, isn't it? That's, that's where the big territory is being found for Newcastle, whereas for, for Sale, it comes from that kick chase, that kick pressure. But what Newcastle have shown in the first half is when they get down here, they've got a fully functional maul that's, that's dangerous, and they've got the power game in the pick and go. So, you know, if they can put seven points on the board here, the scoreline doesn't, doesn't look quite done yet. So let's, uh, let's see if they can execute in the line-out, which, which has been a little bit wobbly this half, and see if they can get this maul in the game. So McDonald at the front, a test of the Falcons' defence. Back to the short side, Burn scores. Say again. Set piece excellence from the Falcons, and they take Salford by surprise. I'm going to say this is an Alex Codling special, who's a really cerebral coach. He loves technical little bits and pieces. So clever here, so so clever. Watch them dummy the mall, dummy mall there. They look like they're breaking open. Sells the cameraman the dummy, and they head down this short line. A nice ball from Callum Chick, and Brian Byrne with a fantastic finish. You see it better here. Watch them break open, break open. No, they don't. They come blind. <laughs> Could done that cameraman as well. Callum Chick does a nice two-on-one play, gives Brian Byrne the bigger man a chance, and Gus Walk can't stop him from two meters. Josh Thomas with another touchline conversion, but this time from the right side for a left footer. And he's not been presented with three easy kicks at all, has he tonight, uh, Josh Thomas? Scores stay as they are, 26 points to 15, but this is the important part. Great finish, isn't it? I mean, Gus War puts his body on the line there. He does what good nines do. Great finish. 
bouncing around for the Falcons. Eleven points behind now. Really catching okay, sail, Cole. Outside, lads. Kick from Elliot, and that's going to bounce. Taken by Carpenter in the end. And the have to watch that carefully, the fullback. War. Into John Hawkins goes Cobus Visa. Use it, please, nine. We're back to his feet after that encounter with uh, Brian Byrne. Puts this up on to Brown's head, and he does well. The right winger. Looked assured on his premiership debut has Louis Brown. Matteo Carreras, of course, off to Bayonne after this season. Confirmed this week after rumours no, 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 swirling lads, around. Causing that. Use the ball, please. We will be completing it this season, however, in Falcons' colours. So much expected of him, but he's uh, lying low at the moment. Hey, four, four, stop! Carreras. Four. Carpenter gets moving. Big fend from Carpenter to Reed. First man. Turnover for the Falcons. Ewan Stevens is racing after this. Stevens gets a knee to the ball. He wins the race. And the Falcons have two in a trice. And Sale really are shocked. Tell you what, I want to highlight Ewan Stevens here for two points of play. First, defensively, he did superbly well. He backed off as I think it was Carpenter was coming across. He backs off, backs off, backs off. Buys time for this turnover to happen. It's a brilliant turnover there. And then he just turns on the afterburners. What, he, he can't sit on that camera angle. He really does put the burners on. Goes past Gus War, he's not a slouch. And he's going to put seven points on the board for Newcastle Falcons and, and put this game completely back into the balance. Josh Thomas gratefully sticks it through the posts. And the fly half has his first ever Premiership points, all seven for Newcastle. 26 points to 22 now, and the game right back on. Try bonus point in the bag as well for the Falcons with that fourth try. Of course, within seven at the moment, but right now their aspirations are going to be shooting well beyond Thank that. Let go of each other. Lovely. Carpenter drives hard. How will Sale go about steadying the ship? A couple of moments where they've lost control of this ball and uh, Falcons have shown their ability to strike. War pressing the usual buttons to put Newcastle under pressure. That's your players' legs. That's your players' legs. McDonald tackled by Ross Harrison, who's making his okay, 200 it, a Premiership appearance tonight. All in the colours of Sale. Yeah, I agree, sir. It's going to be nearing 300 in all competitions at some point this season. Ross Harrison bouncing no around. One it. No one touched it. Advantage. And now dropped by Harper, who didn't think he could play. On the floor. Didn't and that's why he did it, and it was a knock-on. Well, Christian, talk us through that one. Well, Mr. Leal's a lot closer than I am. I didn't see anyone touch he said it, on so the catch on. that you know the, the ball went up initially, and let's have a look. He says that no one touches this here. I think it's Visa. Here he comes. I think he touched that. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, and James Harper is that unfortunate. The ball went straight to him. He couldn't do anything about it. And, and we lead to this comedy point of him just letting the ball go. Did anyone touch that? I didn't see And I think Jasper Visa touched that, but he's not going to own up to it. Oh, I didn't say anything, mate. No, no. Yeah. 
Cameron Hutchinson is off for the Falcons, so to Phil Brantingham. He's had uh, sure, a tough old 56 minutes uh, against this sale pack, but they really have fronted up well. Yeah. 26-22, with the hour mark approaching. Crouch! It represents a Bind. real excellence from the Falcons in all facets of the game to be in the fight at this point against this opposition. And they have a penalty at scrum time as well, would you believe? Adam Brocklebank off the bench into the action and uh, making his presence count alongside Murray McCallum. So the penalty's on the other side, it's not this side there. And the, the, the AR called it as the, as the tight head coming across the scrum. It's pretty unusual for that to be given. You know, everyone's supposed to drive straight, is it's James Harper there. You know, basically in the scrum, you've got to keep it in the air, you've got to go straight. And what, what the penalty's for is for the tight head coming across but it was pretty marginal as, as scrum penalties can be and, and you know sale will still want to have that aggression in the in the chase that every defensive scrum wants so you know not the end of the world they certainly need to shore up their defense here now because you know, falcons are within a score Kovas visa taken off now falcons on the charge again good ball into the midfield for the Falcons and Louis Johnson is now on the park, so to Charlie Madison. And here is Spencer again. Just the one outing this season against Caldy. Slip pass from Chick. Confidence surging through those in green. Thomas chips this over to the far hand side. It bounces up again for Brown. He hurls it back inside. Gus War is there. And there were Falcons numbers arriving just a little too late. And Louis Brown almost with another telling moment in the match. No hands now. Sale all at sea in so many ways under this pressure from Newcastle. Just can't see where the next punch is coming at them at the moment. Okay, use it, please. Yeah, bound. Yeah, bound. He's fully bound. Clearance is long, but Brown keeps it in. Hammers into Sam Bedlow, who does his best to try and pinch the ball back. Falcons there to help out Brown. Here's Chick shrugging off Ernst van Rijn. Not many people have done that in Europe. No one's made more dominant tackles than him this season. Not then against uh, Callum Chick. Brown again. Sales defence is pushing the Falcons deep. And back into their half. That's what Sales defence can do, it can really can get on top of you, it can win big territory with these dominant hits. What Newcastle Falcons need to do is remain calm, and they're doing the right thing here. Build the rook, build the kick chase, put the pressure back on Sale, because they ain't, they're probably not going to score from their own 22. Kick downfield from Elliott, fielded by Carpenter. He's on here. Thank you, all on. Elliott gets back. Wait seven. Okay, will look to run this. Takes on Pepper. Well timed hit from McCullum. Here's Luke Cowan Dickey. Okay, use it, please. Sail on halfway. Uh, use a step. Step. Thank you. Gus War. Sticks to the rule book. The chase after this from Roebuck, who's got up in the air. Didn't knock it on. No, it was a good contest. So Newcastle have to deal with this. Okay, use it, Redshaw plays scrum half. Chick again. What a massive 20 First minutes Callum Chick ball. is going to have to have if the Falcons can come away with this and Adam Brocklebank has come away with this. What a kick. 
and almost, almost the most unlikely of 50-22s. Adam Brocklebank is going to go and see if uh, if he can get that nonetheless. We, we nearly had that most uh, uh, most rare of things, the, the prop forward 50-22. It's again it was good a good phase of play from Sale, imposing that kick chase. Their wingers chase so well, so so well, everything is contested. Newcastle got a little bit of luck. And, and as I said, Adam Brocklebank very nearly achieved the impossible. It's, the kind of break that Newcastle needed at that point because you could feel the pressure building again, couldn't you? You could feel Sale flexing their muscles. But they got that break and they got the field position back. Well, those in the uh, Salford City Stadium warmly applauding the performance of those departing Falcons. James Elliott, the number nine on his debut especially, has provided a lot of poise. I think that was James Harper exiting as well for Sale Sharks. So I think it's been really, really good tonight. Not, not just in the scrum where he's been solid enough, but I think round the field he's had one or two moments which really are really are excellent for a tired puck. gets uh, some running repairs. Yeah, Christian, we'll for, for Sale, are they, are they the doing anything the that you can yeah. notice Thank that you. is wrong, or are they just being uh, how many is it, outfought and, in many ways, uh, uh, outplayed uh, by five, yeah. Newcastle at the moment? Five, five, I don't think anything particularly wrong. Like I said, I think they were starting to impose themselves there, and Newcastle got a stroke yeah. of luck, but they certainly yeah, look outside, best when they, the they focus outside, on their so strengths, which is that incredible kick chase and then that physical power game. Johnny Hill rising the highest for that Your one, but middle, no green problem. hands are on the ball Bunch. there with Kieran McDonald's. It's clearly and penalty the comes. You're clearly through the middle, but you can't collapse it. There's still a more. Number five collapsing the middle. Done mark. all the hard work there, Kieran McDonald. Fought through, he battled through, got to the ball. But just because you get to the ball doesn't, doesn't mean you can collapse it. And that's, that's what the penalty's communicated for. You've still got a battle on your feet. You can't just drag the drag them all to the ground. It's um, and it's that penalty that, that gives Sale this field position where they can start to impose what we just said. The, the power game. Seven, and they've had one or two no, nice set, play, set piece moments from the line out as well with the, with their back lines. So it's it's a costly error and, and gives gives Sale Sharks the opportunity now to, to try and widen this gap. You okay, in? Yeah, good. Bye, man. Another good shift from Guy Pepper. Yeah, as he takes his leave and Guys, you need to come up. now the gap is ridiculous. Come up a bit more. Newcastle's Thank you. bench need to go to work. What a 17 minutes lie in wait for them. Sale will test them again here. In fun rain. In a wider channel this time. War can't get the ball away. James has to do the tidy. The poku for sure. Gets some footwork going and Fonorain just can't take the ball with him. Second by number six. Scrum. Asher Apoku for short. Straight into the action. That's a, that's a tired prop. <laughs> what, what a bit of footwork and explosive. I mean, I've, I've never seen Asher play before live. Um, I've been told about how explosive he can be and how different he can be. I mean, wow. Yeah. The footwork, the offload, what a what a first moment of, uh, of introduction. In a Premiership match, they score for the first time tonight. Asher Apoku for sure. Making that time on the field count. So Sale with uh, a good piece of field position here. Crouch. 55 metres of open side or so to play with. Set. And you can bet the platform will be good as well. So, Mark, so you two need to find your spacings before we set, settle down. So if you, if you, the hookers need to get your gaps right, then do that. I don't want you two head on head. And I don't want the scrum pre-engaged before the set, okay? It's a good challenge this now in the scrum, because yeah, so Falcons have now got Tampin and Brocklebank on, who are 
regular first team is very, very experienced. And, and you know, Sail Sharks have brought on a very inexperienced tight prop, balanced out by a lot of experience with Ross Harrison on the loose head. So, control that way. Be interesting to see how this goes. That last hit was really good for Sail Sharks. Got on the front foot, and a little bit unfortunate the ref stopped it. Let's, uh, let's see how this one goes. Bind! Set! War sets off from the base, but down the blind side. Reed is there. Rides that first hit from Stevens. Curry. Driven forward by Dupria. War keeps the pace as high as possible. Bedlow. A poker for Jor. Just can't take the ball with him. Penalty was coming, so we'll go back. Not afraid to throw, throw an offload, are they? Say we said it earlier. They they really aren't so afraid to keep the ball alive in the tackle, and, and feels like it's a real effort side. from the team. Ben Curry always Good carries hard. He always manages to stay on his feet well. It's this next one here as it comes into midfield. Oh, we stopped it. it was uh, I think it was Dupre. I think it was Dan Dupre into midfield and just slipped that offload to to Asher. Asher, I'm going to say this correctly. Asher, Asher Apoku Fajor, who just couldn't quite catch it, but he's. He's prominent in the loose, isn't he? He's, but you can see he's, uh, he's willing to get that ball in his hands. So, Rob Dupria. With just four points of difference between the two. And it's a little bit of extra breathing space. But it goes to the left of the post, so scores will stay as they are. 26 points to 22. Uh, off, number 12, blue sub. Newcastle. Number 12, sub. Having instigated this turnaround in the second half, now trying to move into the end game and finish off a quite unlikely comeback. Not from the number of points scored, but from the way the match was going, the opposition they're up against. The situation in the game, but how they've laughed in the face of that and come charging back. This is taken though from a high ball. Sale will keep on coming. Dan Dupria sealing the ball. No, Dived on by Mark out. Tampin. Tom Curtis, or well, he may have just taken that out, Tom Curtis. He plays it quickly, but he won't be allowed to do so. It will be Castle Ball. It's not the introduction that Tom Curtis would have wanted. I'd be interested to see where he slots into this sale team. I assume at 10, with uh, with the prayer going to move out. But certainly probably not the first touch he wanted there. Unfortunate bounce and, uh, and gives Newcastle a field position. Stay back, 10, please. Charlie Madison to Hawkins. Barton, Josh Barton at scrum half. Bainbridge on in the 20 jersey. Out and there's no nine there has to get this ball out, he feels. So goes back to Madison. Sale calling for reinforcements on the right side. McDonald, Thomas loops it over. Reed has spied it. Sale back with ball in hand and War sees space behind. And that's excellent coverage from the fullback, Ben Redshaw who had to move very quickly indeed to close this down. Now he leads the charge, War will reply. Hoiks it up for Carpenter to chase. Falcons meeting Sale head on in the kicking exchange and uh, also at that ruck. Uh, so it's that counter up that Sailor's so good at. And uh, I think it was Carpenter who goes through. That's, that's the intercept there from uh, Aaron Reed, who's been good all night. Let's see if we show the penalty. We see as Carpenter goes through. It's good counter up to start with, but look, he's on his hands now. And it's, uh, it's something that the referee said he's not supporting his body weight. You've got to be on your feet in the game of rugby. And that's why it's a Newcastle penalty.
And things a little too close for comfort for those Sale Sharks fans. Not to say the players and not to say the management as well, Christian. Yeah, it's, it's an odd game, isn't it, in terms of Falcons have been deadly when they've had the field position. They've scored practically every time, and that's not going to please Alex Sanderson. But when Sale have imposed themselves, they've looked very comfortable. So it's, uh, the game's in the balance. Who's in and who's not? You can't have two nines, lads. Um, Back you go then, please. Well, I think Sale will know. Their destiny's probably in their hands. They've got four points on the scoreboard, but as well, they... They just need to go back to imposing themselves the way they can. More weight. Newcastle's line out has looked good for most of tonight, and that's not changing with Charlie Madison's introduction and a whole raft of new faces in the pack. Madison at the back of things. Josh Barton. Stay down 19, good work. Under attention is Josh Barton, but he gets the ball away. Louis Johnson at 10 now for the Falcons. Madison. Well done. And Barton. There's numbers away to the left if they can get that. Step back from Redshaw. Opportunities for so many in this Newcastle team to make a name for themselves in these last 10 minutes. The scalp against Sale Sharks, a locked and loaded Sale Sharks team, will be a massive statement. And it is there on the table for them. Barton, Johnson, red short, well read by Rob Dupree. Great read from Rob Dupree there. Stevens plays scrum half. McDonald's. Newcastle trying to whip themselves into shape, but Barton doesn't think it's quite there for them, so he boxes over. War. Inside the 22. He's onside. Stevens heads in field. Wonderful pass from the left winger. Now here's the right winger, Louis Brown. Back to Stevens. He's a slippery customer, but his legs are scragged by Dugdale. Just the kind of environment that Sam Dugdale will thrive in these last 10 minutes and grafting and scrapping for everything. And just look at where Newcastle are now, and the penalty comes. And that sale defence again, Christian. So oppressive. Oh, well, Cowan Dickey, he's been sniffing around practically every rock he can get near. He's, you can tell he's hungry, he wants to get his hands on that ball, and he, and he is such a threat over the ball. Sell Sharks have got a number of them. I think Bev Rod's one of the best around. Uh, there's him, there's the Curry brothers, the Dupree twins. They really do oppress you in defence. They, they take the defensive line to you, and look for those opportunities for turnovers, and they win the, uh, they win the penalty there for their team. Really smart, and as well, Ross Harrison, you know, he spoke in the first half. If you make a tackle and fall in the wrong spot, the turnover doesn't count because you can get penalised. He did really well there to make the tackle, and he headed out to the side as quickly as he could. Gave the opportunity for Cowan Dickey to do what he does best. Rob Dupree to put Sale Shark seven points ahead. Doesn't have the distance, it clatters the crossbar. Newcastle spring into action, Cardell. Time standing still just for a moment for everyone at Salford City Stadium. Well, Newcastle are going to escape uh, somewhat from what might have been, but the pressure is not off. Too many cooks spoiling the broth there for Falcons. Callum Chick takes the carry. The ball comes off the crossbody. Tim Cardle does really well. Down and up. As, uh, as Callum Chick takes the carry here, I think as people latch on, they just disturb his ball carrying arm. Probably the first black mark against him tonight. He's been a uh, he's been a real leader for Falcons tonight so far. Yeah, then don't move again. You're happy. Let's find your spacing to keep your heads off each other. Everyone in Sharks colours in the backs. 
either behind the scrum or on the right hand side of it. There's no blind side at the moment. Gus Wall lets his forwards do the talking here. Doesn't need to go in for the ball, the penalty comes. And that's Sale Sharks, eight. Muscling forward and doing untold damage to the Falcons there. Good on the loose head side there. Ross Harrison got some dominance and what, what he didn't do, which is the worst thing he could have done, is really chase around and spin it and you're not going to get the advantage. What he did was... He was patient and he just dragged the scrum across with him. Scrum again. I actually quite like this. Terri territorially, Sailor in the right spot. Start to build the penalty picture with the referee. You might get a card. I think this is uh, probably the right, right call at this point in time. And just get your physical game, get your front foot carrying into the game, get these big forwards into the game. So it's in your interest to use it with your advantage. Curry at the base. Advantage. And again, those green jerseys going backwards right across the line. Rob Dupree almost breaks free. Oliver Spencer robs the ball from Rob Dupree, but yellow card brandished by Adam Leal. Number 23, cynically on the floor playing the ball. And that's exactly what I said. You know, you start to build the pitch with the referee, multiple penalties in the 22, and you lose a, pe lose a player. And now the, the mountain becomes so much higher to climb. And that is Oliver Spencer, who has seen yellow on his Premiership debut, but so much pressure, it could have been a yellow card uh, for anyone with any indiscretion at that point. Lads, let's go. Thank you. There's nothing wrong with it from my, from my perspective. There you go, lads. Nice. Uh, flankers, make sure you don't join the front row, please. You stay on your hinge. Not one motion, Christian Day. It's difficult to see exactly how he, it was almost too easy the way the ball arrived with him, didn't it? And he keeps saying Mr. Leo was a lot, lot nearer than we are and, uh, and decided that it was a, not just a penalty, but a cynical one in front of the post. Crouch! Numerical advantage, the pressure building. Sale looking for this final blow. War picks off and finds the line. And who else but Sam James to calm nerves in Sale. And surely to put the game beyond doubt now. Yeah, really nice. It starts with a good scrum and it's nice to see uh, that man, Asher, getting, Asher Poku Pajor, getting the, the praise from his team after that. Such a good platform for Gus Wall to run from. He pops out. And that's what I said about that front door rather than back door. You know, if you've got runners as classy as Sam James, you can pick a line like that, give it give it the front door and get, get, get on the front foot, and he, uh, he scores the points. Dupria strokes it over and Sale go 33 points to 22 ahead. Feeling a lot better about life after this. Josh Thomas gets things going. Newcastle need the ball back and it's the right idea from Thomas, but Sale might make them pay for it with Carpenter. Touched by Newcastle. All of a sudden, 11 points ahead. Brown has a hammer of a left boot, okay. the right winger. Curtis. This on side, number nine. Redshaw. Wait, please, Newcastle, don't move, don't move. Newcastle's okay, young guns tonight side, have really no stood problem. up and been counted, and Redshaw very much in that contingent. Thomas as well, just 23 years of age, former Osprey in the 10 jersey tonight. This player's on. Off -stab, off -stab. And the kicking That's battle that Sale can put on any opposition, so difficult to match, but Newcastle really have. 
So Rob Dupria. 22 is on. Inside. It does go out. Red short. Was looking to chase that. So Christian, in terms of our Gallagher Premiership Player of the Match, who would be your nominations, a shortlist and a, and a selection, please. I think there's been good performances on both sides. I mean, Newcastle Falcons, I said, I think Callum Chick stood up all night. He's, he's performed well. Um, but it's going to come from the Sale Shark side, obviously. I think up front there's been lots of graft from a number of people. Not least uh, James Harper, I think, did really well. I think Urs van Rijn has been good. But for me, it's between two. Gus War, Rob Dupreer. I think for me, Gus War has put the ball in the money all night. He's led that kick chase for Sale Sharks. And I think he's had at least two assists. So it's uh, my man, Gallagher, Premiership man of the match. It's Gus War. There's your other candidate feeding Tom Roebuck. And he'll go all the way. Roebuck to round things off and Tries Sale off. have a sheen to the scoreline in a tough old night in Salford. Tom Roebuck sliding home. I think with that last try, the try before with the, the pressure and the yellow card, the, the, the weight just went off Sale Sharks. I feel sorry I haven't given it to him because Rob Dupree is there, he's obviously made such a beautiful run across the field. It's a great finish by Robot when you look. He's beaten, what, three, four players there towards uh, towards the end of that run. Um, but Sale Sharks probably deserving on the scoreboard tonight, but a great effort from Newcastle Falcons to uh, to make it so, so competitive. Priya to make it 40 and the hardest kick of the night for Rob De Priya presents the least problem of all so Sale round things out in some style but for 75 minutes in this match my goodness they were pushed by this Newcastle team but the Sharks with a bonus point victory go to the top of the Gallagher Premiership tonight and they may well still be there come Sunday night and the end of this derby weekend. The Northern Derby goes to the Sharks. It stays in Manchester. They beat Newcastle Falcons 40 points to 22.